Hello, Philosophy 6 students. I'm sure many of you already know how to use Google Jamboard or you have some other idea in mind for what you want to do for diagramming your argument for your final project. There may be some of you who need some help getting started, so I thought I'd walk you through what will also be my first attempt to do this using Google Jamboard. So I've gone to HTTPS colon backslash backslash sorry forward slash forward slash jamboard dot google dot com and I do have to have a Google email address or Google account generally in order to access this but I have that and so it's got me here into my home screen from that I just clicked to start there's a little plus sign at the bottom right here when you first open to start a untitled quote-unquote jam. Let me go ahead and title this. I will call it uh, Final Project Sample. And I'll just be thinking on the fly so I don't know how good my argument is or how well it will be laid out. We'll at least give you an idea for what this might look like and how the functionality works. Um, so let's try let's try creating a text box here first. Here is my text box. And my conclusion for my argument will be that you should complete the final project. I can make it larger or smaller by pulling on the sides. If I need to change the size of my font, which I very well may, once I have everything selected, I can make my text box itself larger or smaller by dragging on the sides and that will help me to change the shape as I move along. Let's move this over because this will probably be my central argument. And what is some evidence for my claim that you should complete the final project? Well, let's get some arrows and Start thinking about this. I'll probably need some more arrows, so let's just duplicate a few. Create a text box. Well, one reason that you should complete the final project is because the project is worth lots of points. What's another reason? Go ahead and duplicate this, maybe. Um, another reason is you want a good grade in the class. That's another reason. Um, good grades 
help you transfer to the school you desire. All right, now thinking about these three reasons here, probably we would say these are more like conjoint premises, right? Because the fact that good grades help you transfer to a new school only means you should complete the final project if, in fact, it turns out that you want a good grade. The fact that you want a good grade Actually, I'm not super happy with that arrangement. Let me work on this a little bit and make a few decisions and then talk you through what I did. You can already see the basic structure we have here. If I did decide that I wanted to make these conjoint premises, all I would need to do is go up here to pen. And if I believe they're conjoint, then it goes like this. And once that's true, I'm only going to need one of these arrows. And organizing it like this would indicate that all of these are to be taken together. But I'm not too comfortable with how that works logically yet. Thinking on the fly is difficult. Uh, let me revise this and talk you through what I decided to do. Okay, so I spent a bit of time to think through this, and here's what I have so far. It's a silly example, I suppose, but my goal here is just to show you how you can do it and give you an example. I know your arguments will be much more thought out, not in 10 minutes. So here's what I have. My claim is still the same. You should complete the final project. I have four premises that are leading into this claim directly. I have four premises here that are meant to support these premises, and I have one premise supporting this one. So you should complete the final project, and as we had it sort of started earlier, we said the project is necessary to get a good grade, and good grades help you to transfer to the school you desire. Now it's pretty clear these are conjoint, because good grades help you transfer to the school you desire is not sufficient to show you should complete the project, nor, we might think, is the project is necessary to get a good grade. Instead, these two work together because the fact that good grades get you what you desire only feeds into the conclusion with the help of this secondary premise. It relies on the secondary premise in order to get its force. Who cares about what good grades do for you? That's no reason to complete the project unless this project itself is going to contribute to your grade. Now, staying on this side, I've made this claim that good grades help you get into the school you desire. Well, maybe you desire to go to Berkeley. If so, then I've tried to make an argument for that claim as well. So here's that argument. I went to Berkeley's website and I looked up what grade do transfer students need to get into Berkeley, and 75% of transfer students have a GPA of 3.7 or above, actually 3.71 or above. So that's good evidence for this intermediary claim, which is, I hope, with this adjunct premise, good evidence for this conclusion. Now what about the idea that is also supporting my claim that the project is necessary for a good grade. Do I have any, any evidence that that is true? Well, the project is worth a lot of points, is good evidence that it's necessary for your grade. What evidence do I have that this project is worth a lot of points? Well, here's some pretty decent evidence. It's the only assignment we've had in this class that's worth over 30 points. So it's obviously the highest contributor as far as projects go to your final grade. Now there is a secondary set of premises here. 
and it's a, a different strand of argumentation to get to the conclusion. In this strand, I'm arguing that you should complete the final project because you made a commitment to this class and successful people follow through on their commitments. Now you made a commitment to this class, you might think, well, that can just go directly into the idea that you should complete the final project. But we're giving some additional evidence, and this additional evidence only feeds into the claim with the um, inclusion of the secondary premise, right? So successful people follow through on their commitments. In itself, that's no reason to complete the project unless one of your commitments is in fact this class, and that's what this premise shows. So to have the full strength of this premise feeding, in, feeding into this conclusion, I do need to have this. They're working together, and so again, they're conjoint, and that's why I have um, this bracket indicating that. Now, I also decided I could offer at least two bits of evidence one to support this claim and one to support this claim. That's why there's no brackets here, because they're independently supporting these two claims. So what's my evidence that you made a commitment to this class? Well, if you're accessing this from within the class, then your name is on the roster. If your name's on the roster, I know you signed up for the class. If you signed up for it, I know you paid. Maybe you paid with assistance, but either way, money was used, and that entails somewhat of a commitment. What about this claim I'm making that successful people follow through on their commitments? Well, a lot of studies have come out lately. The one I'm citing here was in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Uh, N-A-S. And it's one of many studies. This one happened at Toronto, University of Toronto. Uh, but they took many personality traits, many personality traits, and used a lot of data to see how these personality traits correlated with success, in this case, I think, especially in business. And they saw that by far the most highly correlated individual personality trait with success is conscientiousness, which is in large part doing the things that you say you will do and following through on your commitments. So this study and this series of studies is good evidence for my general claim made here that successful people follow through on their commitments and taken with this premise that this is one of your commitments it's good evidence for my conclusion so now that i've completed this if i want to share it along with my project i can go here to share and if I chose, I could um, get a link. I'm going to want to make that link not restricted, um, but anyone with link can view. And I could copy that link and post it in my project. I could also go here and download it as a PDF or save the frame itself as an image and work it into my project that way. Um, this is a good way to make a diagram that's easy to share and will be nice and clear. Hope this example helps. Good luck on the rest of your project.